So this is Pakistan Studies Paper 2, The Environment of Pakistan, May, June 2018. The first question basically states that you have to label a map of Pakistan and its neighboring countries. So the first question's first part is talking about a labeling of Afghanistan, India, the line of longitude 70 degrees east and basically so basically uh, these are the <clears throat> labels that are supposed to be on the map so Afghanistan is on the northwest of Pakistan India is in the east the longitude is the center line which is running through the central part of Pakistan and Tropic of Cancer is the line labeled in red which runs near the Arabian Sea closer to where Karachi is and also intersects the 70 degree east longitude line now on figure uh, describe pakistan's location in relation to other countries in south and central asia so this is like three marks so any of the three points such as pakistan is part of is the western part of south asia or India is to its east, China to its northeast, Arabian Sea to the south, Afghanistan to the northwest, Iran to the southwest. So any of these points uh, in relation to the question will garner three whole marks. Part B talks about the figure 1.2, which is the insert, which is right here. It basically shows a desert, right? So there are all of these features in a desert landscape that need to be highlighted. So what are some of the features? They are that it is sandy. They are dunes made of sand, which you can see in the distance. There are ridges. Uh, there is very scant vegetation. As you can see, the land is pretty barren. There is no such thing as vegetation or greenery and the shrubs or thorny bushes or rakh as they are called can be seen as well so if you highlight all of these things in the answer you will get full three marks now the second part of b explain the challenges of living in a desert area such as the town shown you should develop your answer now whenever the examiner asks that you should develop your answer make sure that you should you should write it in a form which is more understandable like if you have something like high temperatures don't just leave it at writing high temperatures and that's it elaborate your answer a little bit such as in during the day the temperature is hot during the night the temperature is cold that is why there are high temperature variants and secondly unreliable rainfall you can ex explain a little about that ke how uh, reliable the unreliable the rainfall is and because of the arid climate normally there is scant to no rainfall yearly difficult to have vegetation that is another point as you can previously see that we've mentioned that in the first part as well because of the arid climate lack of rainfall all of this reason all of these reasons basically mean that there is difficulty to have proper vegetation another point that can be used is animal rearing or herding is difficult because there is no water source and animals such as buffaloes or cattle or sheep they require water for sustenance and they require vegetation for sustenance if they don't have any of that it will be very difficult for them to survive so therefore another reason uh, is animal rearing is difficult there are a lot of wild animals which are poisonous as well and that can also lead to a lot of harm and also there is a lack of roads and infrastructure so all of these points basically go in with answering this particular question now the third part of part b basically talks about the insert 
of 1.3 which dis which is basically showcasing a a northern region in pakistan there are mountains there are like scant vegetation here as well but you can see that there is a lot of snow gathered in the north now it is asking that state two features of the climate of the typical environment shown in the photograph now you don't you only have to uh, tell two features so make sure that any of the two which makes sense with the picture you write for it for instance you can talk about freezing temperatures and windy and dry climate over here the overall perception is that in the north there are less chances of rainfall and secondly because of the free freezing temperatures it is difficult to sustain life here as well and since it's a two mark question you can just namely write two features and don't have to elaborate it further so you will get full two marks c part so just two ways in which latitude affects the climate now latitude is basically as you can see from the map it it basically talks about different regions now the higher up we go or the higher the north the more north we go we see that the temperature is variant in different regions like the north of pakistan is different from the south of pakistan and especially areas where are near the tropic of cancer so you will have cold climate here and warm climate and then hot climate so there are different ways to elaborate on these points now basically you can talk about the fact that north is cold as it is further from the equator south pakistan is hot with abundant sunshine as it is near the equator so just two marks and if you have this answer down and given the reason that is given here you will get full marks now part d evaluate the extent to which natural topography of pakistan limits human activity and economic development in the north of the country give reasons to support your judgment and refer to examples you have studied you should consider different points of view in your answer now whenever the examiner talks about the fact that you should consider different point of views in your answer always talk about every aspect that is basically within the natural topography of pakistan for example how does it limit human activity and how does it encourage human activity all of these points then need to be elaborated in a proper manner so that you can garner the full six marks on hand so how does it limit human activity well it the availability of flat land makes it impossible impact of topography on climate is very natural restrictions to development there can not be a lot of development such as infrastructure industry so such as making roads making factories making industry it becomes a little difficult how does it encourage human activity well in the north there is a lot of potential for tourism uh, most of the dams or hydro electric power supplies that are made are near mountainous regions so that the water can be held firmly between ridges and mountains and it also promotes cottage industry so these are the three points that basically lead to encouraging of human activity in the north now basically we you have to evaluate the answer along these points to gain maximum marks we move on to question 2 again which starts with a map of pakistan which is basically the general pattern of the cambridge the first section is always uh, objective based questions where you get one mark for each point that you give now in this particular map it is basically showing the forestation within pakistan now the first part is asking the students to name the forest type shown at a b and c now the a part in the dark is basically the coniferous forest they are mostly in cold regions because of their shape and their structure then in the b part you have subtropical scrub which is basically scantily placed all across pakistan then you have in the c part uh you have the tropical thorn or rakh as it called it is mostly akin to desert regions now 
the second part talks about using figure 2.1 name two areas in pakistan where mangroves grow so mangroves are usually grown near uh, river river beds and bays so two regions of pakistan are indus delta which is somewhere around here and the somiani bay which is along the coast of balochistan so now you have two particular regions which in which mangrove forest grow b first part describe two natural characteristics of mangrove mangrove forest so they are broad and big leaves with drip tips so that they can hang and their height is usually 3 to 8 meters describe two functions of forest now you have to talk about the functionality of forests in general which are that it protects the soil from erosion it prevents floods takes in co2 and gives out o2 so basically in makes the environment pleasant and it's just for two marks so any of these points mentioned if you can elaborate a little on these two fronts you will get the full marks suggest three physical factors which determine the type and density of forest so altitude one reason then you have precipitation where more ra rainfall you have greener trees less rainfall dry climate you will have thorny bushes and type of soil salty and less fertile part c explain how this type of tree has adapted to the climatic conditions it grows in you should develop your answer now this particular tree as you can see in the picture has very conical shapes on the leaves has a strong bark strong structure overall now you basically can start by saying that it is an evergreen short growing season for it because it only grows for a minimum amount of time it has compact conical shapes cone protect seeds during cold months so it is in the colder climate so therefore it needs that shape to protect its seed thick barks anchor against strong winds so when the wind is going against the tree it can stand firm because it has thick barks state three causes of deforestation in pakistan now these are pretty simple you can talk about the fact that there is a, because of farming there can be a lot of cutting down of trees construction of roads is another reason and also industrial growth where industries are made usually on if there are banks of forest laid around the countryside they will obviously be wiped out so that industry can be created now the d part says around 5% of the land area of pakistan is forested to meet sustainable development targets the amount of the land covered by forest needs to increase to 25% by 2030 read the following two views about possible uses of land in pakistan a increased forest cover is an important use of land for the future development of pakistan there are more important uses of land for the future development of pakistan than increased forest cover so there are two points of views one says that the importance of forest is very very central to the development of pakistan the other says that there are other reasons besides forest that is necessary for the development of pakistan now what your job is to talk about both factors in relation to each other for example the importance of forest basically exists because it protects against soil erosion it protects areas from flooding a valuable resource for industry however at the same time it is not the only factor that leads to the development of pakistan importance of other uses of land is growing population needs new settlement because there is limited space available a lot of areas cannot be made into forest anyways and food needs to be grown which needs a pathway of for clear processes question number 3 define the term livestock farming basically livestock farming is about rearing and keeping of animals state two uses of livestock on farms it is plowing and irrigation b part first so now this is the first part 
of the insert, the second insert in the paper. They are showing different livestock, sheep and buffaloes, which you have to identify as to what they are and what their purpose is. So in figure 3.1, what kind of cattle is being shown? They are cows. And in figure 3.2, what kind of cattle is being shown? That is sheep. Now name two products from livestock shown in figure 3.1. Figure 3.1 is showing cows and buffaloes. So you can talk, you basically can say that the two livestock products that can be procured from this particular animal are leather and beef. Describe the benefits of rearing the livestock shown in figure 3.1 and figure 3.2. So rearing livestock is usually a prestige for farmers. They are proud that they have a large arsenal of animals at their disposal, rareable in the most areas. And since these animals are widely rareable, they can be raised and easily kept. Therefore, that's another benefit to have these animals for farmers. And it's a valuable food source. And it's also a monetary source because things like leather, beef, meat, any other product that is taken out from these animals can be sold and a lot of money can be made by the farmers through that. Part C. Study the map showing the main regions of Pakistan where buffaloes are kept. So here near the south of Punjab, the eastern side and a central part of Sindh. These are the two parts where buffaloes are kept. Describe the distribution of buffalo in Pakistan. So the main areas are in Sindh, the central part, and mostly in the southern belt of Punjab. So they are along the eastern border on flatter land. So these are generally plains where buffaloes can be easily reared. So just two reasons why buffalo are kept in these regions. Well, first of all, buffaloes like milder climate and these particular regions have pleasant to mild climate and does not have extra hot summers. Secondly, it needs flat land because it cannot climb hills or you know survive on rugged landscape, which is unsuitable. Explain how natural factors can create problems for buffalo farmers. You should develop your answer. Again, this is a four mark question. So you have to elaborate a little on your answer. For example, the natural factors can be climate, which means that extreme weather, whether it's extreme cold weather or extreme hot weather would be a difficult thing. Lack of water or famine can be another reason which might cause difficulty for buffalo farmers. Disease or plague of different variants can also cause a problem. And lack of tree shade is another reason. So these four points, if they are elaborated on in connection to the question, will gather full marks. D part. The government has encouraged the growth of commercial poultry farming since 1964. There have been some challenges, but different strategies have been introduced to develop this type of farming in Pakistan. Evaluate the extent to which commercial poultry farming in Pakistan has overcome its challenges and developed further. Give reasons to support your judgment and refer to examples you have studied. You should consider the challenges and the strategies used in your answer. So again, you have to basically talk about both the challenges and strategies. Now, the challenges are that there is an increased demand for poultry. There are a lot of diseases in the bird community which can hamper the production of poultry. There is air pollution, which also causes a lot of damage. Population prefer preference for white meat. So there is a sudden shift by the population to prefer white meat. So that is a challenge in order to maintain more poultry farms. So what are the strategies that can be used? Improving power supply to farms where it can help farmers create a better sort of condition for the poultry that is being held there. There are guidelines for rearing poultry like how what kind of things should be done to make sure that all of the poultry that is being raised is raised in accordance to proper health conditions and is healthy and well maintained.
vaccination programs to prevent diseases now this is another strategy in which poultry gets vaccine so that they cannot get diseases question number 4 It shows a map uh, location of selected textile industries in Pakistan. Name three major textile centers labeled X, Y, Z. Now, X is basically Hyderabad, Y is Karachi, and Z is Faisalabad. These are the three main producers of textile in Pakistan. Producers of textile in Pakistan. Describe the location of the major textile center labeled Y in the south of Pakistan. That's one in province of Sindh at the center of three cotton areas. That is where Karachi is at. Define the term secondary industry. Industry that converts raw material into products is known as secondary industry. State a feature of each of the following type of industry. Now, what is cottage industry? Owner and families work. there is no hired labor and there is small investment in small scale industries there are maximum 10 hired laborers it is it has medium investment large scale industries has no cap on the number of employees and it has a lot of investment as well state three reasons for the location of cotton textile industries in pakistan usually they are near a port or a dry port so that it can be made easily accessible for import and export they are usually near markets so that in the local setting products can be transferred to the markets quickly they are also near proper infrastructure such as rail rails and roads so that the transportation of these products can be done quickly and timely c part now c part shows the three processes of involving the spinning of cotton now you have to describe all three processes in the process a the bales are being opened and they are being flattened so that the next step can be of sorting fibers where it is basically turned into web and from there there is a drawing where it, the third part process is called drawing where the fibers are straightened explain why the cotton textile industry is important to pakistan you should develop your answer largest sector of the economy it is one of the largest sectors of the economy and it has a great export potential and it also employs a large number of people and it also has a large domestic demand now the d part although cotton textiles is in pakistan's largest industry it still faces the challenges if it is to increase its global market share read the following two views about some of the challenges to the cotton textile industry a is load shedding of electricity is a major challenge to the growth of the cotton textile industry b is lack of skilled labor is a major challenge to the growth of to the cotton textile industry which view do you agree with more give reasons to support your answer and refer to examples you have studied you should answer you should consider view a and view b in your answer so again basically if you can talk about both views in connection to the development of the textile industry the chances of getting full marks are higher so with regards to load shedding basically the problem comes with when the production comes to a standstill orders cannot be completed because there is no light workers may be sent home because there is no work coming on because there is no power supply skilled labor shortage is another problem which basically talks about the fact that vocational training is needed employees are overworked that are already working production may decline if there are no skilled laborers so all of these points are basically talking about the fact that in the textile industry both factors play an equal role in stopping it from actually developing into a much much larger market share in the global community